Good morning, lads. Welcome to Spring 2016 semester. The first topic of the Spring 2016 semester is the nervous system. And we know nervous system is made up of two components, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of two viscera. One is brain, looking at human brain model, and another is spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system contains many neurons, and these neurons bring the information from outside the body as well as from inside of our body and send it to central nervous system. Central nervous system process that information, interpret that information and actually send a command message to something like a skeletal muscle which will be then contracting based on that command message or it command a gland to release a particular substance. Now, our main focus of today's lab will be only on central nervous system and especially, especially uh, the brain part of the central nervous system. The way we are going to do our brain lab is looking at the human brain model as like this as well as looking at the APR3 software for human brain. And then we will be also dissecting sheep brain, which is very similar to the human brain. So, to begin with, human brain is one of the largest organ of our body. And uh, it's a very comp complex organ. It has many functions, controls muscle movement, regulates body organ, but it, uh, activity of body organ, and it also does a lot of complex thinking. So it is a very complex uh, organ of our body. So we need to see the parts that make the brain. And when we are holding the brain this way, we are looking at the dorsal surface of the brain. And this is the dorsal surface of the brain we are looking at and this is the ventral surface of the brain. So when we are looking from the dorsal surface, first thing we cannot miss, the part of the brain which takes almost entire region of the brain. And this part of the brain, this whole part of the brain we call cerebrum. And cerebrum made up of two hemispheres. And because it's the dorsal surface of the brain, or we can say dorsal view, this part of the cerebral hemisphere will be called right cerebral hemisphere as my right hand. And this part of the cerebral hemisphere will be left cerebral hemisphere as my left hand. If I go to ventral view, then this side of the cerebral hemisphere will be left cerebral hemisphere and this side will be right cerebral hemisphere. Cerebrum made up of lobes. But before we see the lobes, few other things that we want to see. The surface of each cerebral hemisphere has lot of this elevation. And these are the uh, elevations where lot of neurons actually live in. And these elevations we call gyrus, singular, gyri, plural. In between the individual gyrus we have shallow groove. And this shallow groove is actually called sulcus and in plural we call sulci. We also see that there is a very deep groove separating two cerebral hemispheres from one another. And this very deep groove is called longitudinal fissure. So shallow groove is sulcus, but very deep groove which is separating two cerebral hemispheres from one another, we call longitudinal fissure. Now more gyrus, more sulcus we have, more neurons can be put in into those areas. 
And so, because human brains uh, do a lot of complex function uh, compared to many other animals, human brains have more gyre and more circuitry uh, than any, many other animal brains. Okay. So before we get into other parts, let's look at also the lobes that found within the cerebrum. And these lobes take name after the bones which are directly above those lobes protecting that part of the brain. So the most anteriorly I see this lobe. And this lobe we call frontal lobe which is directly underneath the frontal bone of the skull. Then we have parietal lobe and parietal lobe is where all the general senses such as uh, sense of light touch, uh, sense of heat, sense of temperature will be uh, coming in and are uh, interpreted by the parietal lobe of the brain. Frontal lobe actually we have uh, interpretation for skeletal muscle movement. Then we look at the back of the cerebrum and this lobe will interpret the visual information and these lobes are called occipital lobe and this lobe is directly uh, on the region of occipital bone. Occipital bone will be protecting the occipital lobe, parietal bone protecting parietal lobe, frontal bone protecting frontal lobe. Lastly, we go to the side of the cerebrum and we see this lobe on both sides and this is protected by the temporal bone of our skull and these lobes we call temporal lobe. Temporal lobe contains auditory cortex as well as olfactory cortex, so uh, it interprets the sense of hearing as well as sense of smell. Cortex means what you see from outside, so sometimes we call uh, cerebral, cerebrum as cerebral cortex as well. Directly posterior to the occipital lobe, you see the other part of the brain and this is called cerebellum and I see a fissure directly between occipital lobe and the cerebellum and this fissure we call transverse fissure. Cerebellum just like cerebrum has two hemispheres in human. In sheep actually we do not see two hemispheres, we see one hemisphere for the cerebellum. And because again we are looking from dorsal surface, we call this hemisphere as right cerebellar hemisphere, this is left cerebellar hemisphere. Now if I look from ventral view, this will be left cerebellar hemisphere, right cerebellar hemisphere, this is left cerebral hemisphere, right cerebral hemisphere. The third part of the brain is called brain stem. And brain stem made up of three parts. Most superior part we call midbrain, which usually in real bone will be always hidden in the uh, ventral view. So it's a little bit hard to see from the ventral view on the real brain. Then we have middle bulgy part of the brain stem, which we call pons. And at last we have most inferior part of the brain stem which we call medulla oblongata which joins the brain to spinal cord. Lastly, the last part of the brain, to see the last part of the brain we have to open the brain otherwise we cannot see that and we actually open the brain by mid sagittal cut which you will do also with sheep brain and we see this part. So this part together we call diencephalon and there are two parts in diencephalon. The superior part we call thalamus. Directly underneath the thalamus or below thalamus we call this part as hypothalamus. So together thalamus and hypothalamus make the diencephalon. As you are looking 
the lateral view of the brain now one more thing you see this pink structure this is the structure uh, which contains a lot of axon fibers and this structure we called corpus callosum which actually will join two cerebral hemispheres uh, together with each other one more thing we see in this uh, model because cerebellum has been cut now you see uh, there are some white fibers there this is called white matter coming from the axons uh, and then we also have this gray matter so gray matter mainly coming from cell body of neuron dendrite of neuron and when what we are seeing the white matter white axons going into gray uh, matter of the cerebellum giving an appearance of tree so this is called arbor vitae arbor means tree vitae is life so it's called tree of life or arbor vitae all right so these are all the parts of the brain and uh, one thing that you need to note functions for each of those parts which is in your lab manual table 30.2 those are extremely important for you to know now we will be starting the dissection of sheep brain at this point of time so to do the dissection of sheep brain i need gloves i put i need little a small a uh, tray with sheep brain in it i also need a scalpel i need a scissor i need a forcep and i need a probe okay so this is the sheep brain much smaller than the human brain that you just saw and the moment you see the sheep brain you need to understand what surface of the brain are you looking at so this is the dorsal surface and so even though we cannot see very well at this point of time we can understand this is what we are seeing is the right cerebral hemisphere this is left cerebral hemisphere we really cannot see the cerebellum right now and we cannot see this part also very well we will see that pretty very soon let's go to ventral view and again we see the left cerebral hemisphere right cerebral hemisphere before you can see all parts of the brain you will notice there is a white film like membrane covering the entire cerebrum cerebellum and also part of the brain stem both from the dorsal surface as well as from ventral surface this white film like membrane we call meninges and there are three meninges meninges are nothing more than membranes which actually attaches the uh, brain to our skull and the meninges that you are seeing is the outermost meninges which we call dura mater so first thing we need to do to separate the dura mater from the cerebrum and other part of the sheep brain so we can see the sheep brain parts also one more thing you notice if you understand this is cerebrum this has to be frontal lobe area and right at the frontal lobe you see this bone and if you remember from last semester you learned the deepest cranial bone in the skull which is called ethmoid bone and this is the ethmoid bone so first thing you do you gently take off the ethmoid bone
Okay, the next thing will be to separate dura matter from the cerebrum. And usually you will find a hole to which you can first start your cart. If not, then you can hold the forcep to one of the area and then start cutting from there. But usually there will be always a little bit of area where you can start your cutting. So I start my cutting right from this end. Is right by the longitudinal uh, fissure area, the dura matter will be hardest to, or it will be hard to cut. Gently separate dura matter. Do it very slowly so that you do not take off any necessary important part. Okay. So you did this far in the dorsal surface. Then you come towards this end. This is actually spinal cord. Most of you will be able to see some part of the spinal cord because it will be attached with the uh, uh, part of it will be attached with the medulla oblongata part of the brain stem. But remember the spinal cord is not part of the brain but part of the central nervous system. So you gently cut over here. The moment you ca come in into the cerebellum area, you understand that dura matter is very thick in there. But this is the dura matter area which is the thickest in whole brain so when you are cutting over this area you will feel the thick tissue which is okay and then gently do not completely take it off but gently pull it out which expose the uh, cerebellum right now. So before we go to ventral side and cut any dura matter, let's see what we can see from the dorsal view. So first thing we see here, two cerebral hemisphere, this is the longitudinal fissure, separating two cerebral hemispheres from right, from one another, this is the right cerebral hemisphere, this is the left cerebral hemisphere. The elevations are gyrus or gyri in plural. The uh, groove between the gyrus is the sulcus. Longitudinal fissure is the deep groove separating two long cerebral hemisphere from one another. And then we want to see the lobes of the cerebrum. Here is the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, this is the parietal lobe, the frontal lobe, this is parietal, frontal, and then on the back we have occipital lobe. And on the side this bump that you see that's the temporal lobe, this side as well as over here, temporal. Now we go to the, you know, before we go to the ventral aspect, this is the cerebellum. As we said, 
cerebellum in sheep is contain just one cerebellum, it doesn't have two hemispheres. You also see the transverse fissure between the occipital lobe and the cerebellum. Occipital lobe of cerebrum and cerebellum is the transverse fissure. Here is spinal cord and I know this is the beginning of the medulla oblongata but I cannot see medulla oblongata well unless I go to the ventral view. So now we come to the ventral surface and right at the ventral surface when you come in you see the dura mater is almost looks like the uh, hands of the you know garments. So I will gently take off dura mater from the sides. Just cleaning that area so that you can see better. Now a lot of time you will see this area also contain dura mater much more but um, in this particular brain, I only see a key, only in here a little bit. So this separate the dura mater as much as I want to separate. This is the spinal cord. This is the medulla oblongata. This is pons. Midbrain is here a little harder to see because it has lot of other organs there. Now, you do not want to remove dura mater on this area. One reason you do not want to remove dura mater in this area because there is a gland right here on which dura mater is attached to. And if you remove the dura mater right from this area, you also will take that gland up. This gland is very important, pituitary gland. And as a uh, reminder from last semester, we saw a cranial bone which is phenoid bone which uh, articulates with all other cranial bone of skull and sphenoid bone has a particular uh, structure cella tarsica which contains pituitary gland within its hypofossil fissile fossa. So this is where actually cella tarsica is and you can also see some part of uh, sphenoid bone is right here. part of the greater wing, lesser wing, right here, that's the sphenoid bone part. And this is the area of the sphenoid bone which has the cella tarsica. And so pituitary gland is located right in there. So what we are going to do, we will be cutting the sheep brain from the ventral surface through the longitudinal fissure and we will bisect pituitary gland and we will come down all the way through the brain stem into the spinal cord. So this cut will be mid sagittal cut to give a mid sagittal view of the sheep brain. Before we do that, two more things that we need to see from the ventral view. A lot of you will have this intact. I am seeing this creamish structure on the ventral surface at the very top of the frontal lobe. This creamish structure we call olfactory bulb, which is the end of the olfactory nerve. And one more thing you see, this fatty tissue area is actually back of our eye. And from right eye and left eye, two nerve, which we call optic nerve, bringing the information of vision to our brain. And so, this is one optic nerve from the right eye, this is another optic nerve from the left eye and they together crisscrossing in the middle, usually it will, won't be cut, it will be intact like that but certain brain you may see is already kind of cut off. But this middle region is called optic chiasm where the optic nerve crisscross and then it continues as optic track. So when I am cutting through the longitudinal fissure, I need to make sure my cut go in the middle, through the middle of optic chiasm, middle of pituitary gland, 
and come down all the way down to the spinal cord. have to hold it little bit tightly especially in the pituitary gland area so that it doesn't come off You see in this one, part of it is coming out. Sometimes that will happen, but on one of the cut, the dairy gland will be still stay in the. Always put that back in case down. So this case, two mid sagittal section of the sheep brain, and all we need to see now the same part that we saw from the. Uncut, it is uh, uncut. Uh, bring. So again, this is the. You can do any one of those. One of those will be little better than other. So this is my cerebrum, this is cerebellum, this is the spinal cord, this is the medulla oblongata, bones, and this is the midbrain. So spinal cord is over here, make sure you understand spinal cord is not part of brain, part of central nervous system. Mid, uh, medulla oblongata is directly after the spinal cord or above the spinal cord, then you have bones, then this part is the midbrain. Here is thalamus. Underneath the thalamus is hypothalamus. And what we see on the hypothalamus containing in hypothalamus area is the pituitary gland. And sometimes pituitary gland will be little bit better looking. So pituitary gland in this one is little bit better than the cut that just has been made. But you can see both this as well as. Now one more thing we want to see between the thalamus and midbrain there is a tiny little gland this is called pineal gland or pineal gland and this actually pineal or pineal gland actually um, make us sleepy by producing a particular 